Yesterday I was talking about one of the most annoying things about current media coverage of Chile and the elections there and how there's this idea that was started by some uh, scare pieces in the US media that supposedly Gabriel Boric, who is like fucking old Joe Biden type figure, just a Keir Starmer sort of person. Um, is a radical leftist student leader and all this crap, which and and it is literally something that was made up in the U.S. media. And but I wanted to talk about the sort of thing that ought to be getting some fucking attention um, in terms of Chile stories, because as I've said a couple of times, every you know, once in a while, you have this situation where it's like when. People are fucking dying in Chile. It's crickets. You don't hear anything. And unfortunately, that's also true of the English language left media, who really ought to be covering the stuff. So I just want to talk about one case, because it was it was back in the news again in Chile just recently. See, um, there have been various protests outside what's called Little La Moneda. The sort of um, building attached to, if I remember correctly, the foreign ministry, uh, where the president-elect, in this case Gabriel Boric, and his transition team get, um, get to do their, you know, transitional activities. And so there have been various protests, mostly to do with releasing the thousands of political prisoners, which is a major demand, but there's also what is known in Chile as the Caso Caice. During the campaign, Boric had been happy to pose for like photo ops with the families of the victims in the Caso Caice, which I'm going to talk about in detail. But ever since he got elected, he just did, he doesn't want to know him. And so they were out there protesting, and the plainclothes cops, the Policía de Investigaciones, also known in Chile as Los Raticulio, um, actually opened fire on the fucking protest. Uh, you know, and Boric, of course, he didn't even, he wasn't anywhere to be seen. But here's what, here's the story. There are lots of cases like this, I want to be clear, from the past couple of years. This is just one that just happened to be, get a couple of reminder headlines in the past couple of days. See, in the first couple of weeks of the rebellion, when the military were out and they were just going to town on people, there were a number of situations where you would have buildings like supermarkets, warehouses, a shopping center in one case, taken over by the military. Witnesses see the military taking control over it. They clear the place out, and not long thereafter, there's a fire. And the official line is that the place was looted. Except all sorts of footage surfaces that actually the military were there the entire time. So if it was looted, it was done. So it happened under military supervision. Now, the thing is that after these fires, gradually bodies started to be found. And again, the official line, which uh, was... Oh, these people looted the place and then they died in a fire that they stupidly set um, while they were still inside the fucking building and, you know, basically sort of NHI sort of explanation, no human involvement. And there was basically fuck all done to investigate this stuff. Well, the, one of those was a warehouse the, belonging to the Kaiser company on the outskirts of Santiago where there was a fire and a number of bodies were found and officially again the line was that uh, they were looters and the um and they had just uh, died while setting a fire well a lot of the families couldn't when they finally identified the bodies and the families started to get involved a lot of them didn't couldn't make any sense out of that because that didn't sound like their relatives who were found dead there, and in at least one case, with um, a middle-aged guy, family man, who never was never in this part of town. It was miles away from any place that he would actually have a reason to go. Nobody in the family could explain why the hell he was there in the first place, and he was not the sort of guy who was going to go out and 
have a bit of incendiary direct action. He just wasn't the type. And there was no reason for him to be in this area in the first place. He just went out one night, and nobody ever heard from him again until his body was found. So, you know, they contacted some human rights groups, some groups of forensic anthropologists and people, and an independent medical examiner had a new post-mortem done. And in his case, and in a number of other cases, a number of facts started to come to light that really cast serious doubt and nothing uh, and basically nothing remained of the official story of this. First of all, it turned out there had been no effort to investigate these scenes. All that had happened, for, you know, forensic services had just sort of scooped up the bodies and buggered off. They had made no attempt to secure the scene, no attempt to secure evidence, no attempt to have a look around. Like, there was definitely material evidence that was just left there, including a bottle with holes in it that seemed to have been used to pour petrol as an accelerant on the on the scene. These people did not die in a fire. None of the signs of that were present. What was found in various cases, including this guy who had no reason to be anywhere near this building in the first place and would never have been looting anything, were indications they'd actually been shot, that they were dead before the fire was started. So these people, and there are lots of cases like this. This was like, this is this is the sort of horrific shit that the for the past couple of years have been in Chile, and it gets no coverage at all. So these people were demanding some kind of proper, independent, trustworthy inquiry into what happened to their loved ones, and Bodic kind of was happy to posture with them to show that. He, you know, he was a guy who cared about human rights during the campaign, and he just uh, just ignored them after he got elected. And, but this stuff has been ignored completely by, you know, by the foreign press and by the media, by, like, leftist media. People, we ought to be drawing huge amounts of attention to this internationally, because the military who are in the frame for doing this... Are, you, are trained and armed and supported back to the hilt by Washington. There is a U.S. military base in Chile right now. I forget the name of the place, but it was a huge controversy when it happened. A lot of people are unsurprisingly pissed off to have it there, especially when it turned out that they were train using it as a training center for counterinsurgency techniques which is exactly what's been going on for the past couple of years in Chile. So this is the shit that ought to be getting coverage, especially in left media. Not this, not this election bullshit that most of the population in Chile doesn't give a fuck about. I've decided I'm going to try to get more attention to these things, at least use this stream to kind of mention some of it and 